cultural darkness is everywhere. Hopelessness abounds. Divisiveness is absolutely touching every segment of American life. It's time to act. We must take the initiative to gather in unity. Unity in our towns, unity in our cities, unity in our churches, and unity across America. Let's do everything we can to make every effort to move people to pray for unity on the National Day of Prayer, May 3rd, 2018. Christ crucified. It's, it is the glorious gift that we have in the church of Jesus Christ that we believe we can cling to. There is an evangelist out there today, a modern evangelist by the name of Ray Comfort. And one of the things that he does is he comes out, he goes into the public and he talks to people about the Christian faith. He goes, he lives in California and he tends to go and into areas where there's a lot of artists, a lot of what they call themselves is free thinkers, which I honestly, I don't think they are that free thinking because they're very closed on certain things. But he goes into these areas where there are many that don't believe and they profess. They often are vehemently against Christianity. And he says, he starts by asking questions and people most of the time, how many, I mean, I think all of us, we raise our hand, we think we're good people, right? But he did kind of like what I did with the kids there. And he starts to talk through the Ten Commandments in the same way of asking people, do you steal? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? You're, well, you're a thief. If you've ever had a thought where you wanted something that was some, belonged to somebody else, you're covetous. If you've ever had an angry thought against one, somebody, you are a murderer. Because Christ did say that if you have, if you think ill against a brother or sister in Christ, you have killed them in your heart and your spirit. If you desire them to no longer be around, you, have, you are desiring their death. So when you think about it that way, the reality is, is if we think we're a good person by our own doing, by our own actions, well, <clears throat> when it's really weighed out, we find, no, we are not good people. We fall short of the glory of God every day. You're going to talk to God too? Okay. Well, let's, let's talk to God together then. All right? We fall short of the glory of God. Right? Every day. We do the wrong things. We don't always listen or we don't always respect or follow the instructions that God desires for us to have. We are not always good people. But the message of Christ is simply Christ crucified. When Jesus walked into the temple before the Passover, the people there were doing what was right in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the people. This was what you were supposed to do. So the money changers were there doing what they're supposed to do, at least to the letter of the law. They were not doing anything wrong by the letter of the law. But their hearts were not pure in their actions or their thoughts. The money changers 
were, 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 were probably not being as fair as they could in their exchange. They were, being, they were wanting to make a profit for the temple, for themselves, by, by being these money changers. So they were probably not always the most honest in setting their prices, because not every money changer probably had the same, the same rate. They were charging an inflated price probably for these good products that could be sacrificed in the temple. And the hearts of the people, it wasn't for the glory of God, but for the, for, for, for the padding of their own wallets and also for appearances before everybody else. See, God doesn't care about appearance. He doesn't care about how you look to everyone else. God cares about what's in the heart. God cares about what's deep down inside. God cares about how you are, how you think, what you do. He doesn't really care about how good you think you are. Because the reality is, as Jesus said, he knew man inside out. He didn't need man to bear witness to him. He knew man's heart. Man's heart is self-centered and self-seeking. If we are allowed to follow our own paths and our own directions, we are selfish. That's true. We become angry when people do things that are not what we want them to do. Or they're not right in line with where we think they should be. But see, God desires for us not to be that way. He desires to humble our hearts and humble our spirits, which is contrary to how we want to be. That's why we like to think of ourselves as good. It's easier to do penance. It's easier to do good works if we think that it's going to earn us some favor before God. It's easier for us to do things than it is for us to simply believe that God has done it for us. That God has done it because he loves us. It is easier for us to do things when we think, when we know people are going to think well of us. See, God gave these commandments to refocus our hearts, not to create another idol in our lives. But at the time of Jesus, and even today, we sometimes can find these commandments to be comforting in the sense that we can use them as a way to gauge how good we are. They were at the time of Jesus. If you talk to an Orthodox Jew that believes in the old Pharisaical mentality, if, if you really talk to a good fundamentalist Orthodox Jew, and you ask them about how, how do you keep the Ten Commandments, they'd say, Ten! I wish it were so few. Because in Pharisaical understanding in the Torah, there are over 600 rules that a good Jewish person would follow and live by. If I remember correctly, the number is 627. And if you are a good Jew, you will make sure that you abide by each of these or do the appropriate work to find forgiveness of those things. But see, in Christ, in Christ crucified, Christ says, no, you are forgiven. I forgive you. The work has been done. You don't have to move forward. To, you don't have to do these things to move forward. Trust in me and do as I ask you, as I call you to do. Trust in me and live your life focused on Christ and Christ alone. Christ crucified. And there is a transformation that can happen in your heart and in your life and your spirit. One of my favorite quotes of Martin Luther is, God doesn't need your good works. Your neighbor does. 
We are called to do good things, not because we need to be penitent in our actions and we need to do penance in order to receive forgiveness. But God, God himself, he forgives us of everything simply by our asking. He forgives us simply at our request and our realization and our need for forgiveness. It is easy for us to fall short, but God loves us. And as we think of the glorious promises of Jesus Christ, and we remember these Ten Commandments that He has given us, the transformation of these commandments isn't to make us feel guilty, isn't to make us feel shame. Those are the weapons of Satan. But the tool of the Ten Commandments is to make us and help us to realize our need for Christ and His death on the cross and the forgiveness that we have received. And in that, we can find joy. And in that joy, God desires you to know His love God desires you to know his peace. God desires you to know his forgiveness. And may that peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.